and he's dead tired because he can't breathe. He can't breathe through his nose. He, he has a deviated septum and uh, probably from birth because his palate is so narrow. When the palate is V-shaped, it's supposed to do this over time, right? And, but if it's V-shaped and the nose septum comes down, it bumps into that and starts wrinkling. The, that little septum begins to buckle because the, the palate's in the way. And then you can't breathe your nose. And then of course, as you know, the rest is you know crazy what happens. Thank you, Dr. Mark. We're gonna be hearing a lot more from him in just a few moments. What I'd like to do now is welcome everybody to the first ever Breath, the New Science of a Lost Art Expert Q&A. We're gonna be talking about the why and what of sleep taping. But before we do that, I wanna talk about the how. I've received a few dozen emails from people asking me how I used sleep tape. So this is it. Take a roll of 3M micropore hypoallergenic tape, surgical tape, and I remove a piece about the size of a postage stamp, take some of the adhesive off, just like that, place it at the center of my lips, just like this. That's sleep tape. That's all it takes to remove it. I use my tongue, don't rip it off, put the tongue between the tape and the lips, kind of do a little windshield wiper action, comes right off. The point of this is not to create a hermetic seal across the lips. You see that on YouTube? Don't do that. There's no reason to do that. The point of sleep taping is to just train the mouth shut at night. That tape should be coming off very easily. So to tell you a lot more about this, I'm going to pass the mic over to Dr. Mark Verhenny. He's a dentist, a sleep and airway specialist. He's the founder of Ask the Dentist, a very resourceful website the author of The Eight-Hour Sleep Paradox, How We Are Sleeping Our Way to Fatigue, Disease, and Unhappiness. He's been prescribing sleep tape to his patients for decades and is here to tell us the real science behind this otherwise sketchy sounding practice. Before we begin, Dr. Mark, why don't you tell us how you use sleep tape? What you did is fine. There is no right or wrong way to tape. You're not sealing your mouth shut necessarily. This is a reminder, that's all it is. Because if you were to open suddenly, and I'll demonstrate that, the tape comes off. This is not a permanent closure for six, seven, eight hours at night. And I think a lot of people think that their teeth come together and are held together. That's not true. The teeth and the jaw can still move, but the lips are closed and it's a reminder. So, and then of course, if it keeps coming off, we'll talk about that later, that's a sign that something's wrong. So. I have a lot of facial hair like you do, but all you have to do is get a sticky like um, hypoallergenic type tape. I use the exact same tape you do, and you just apply it to the lips, and this is what I do. Make sure your lips are dry. I'm doing this in the dark, typically. I put my eye mask on, I reach over to my night drawer, and I just uh, rub this in to my, on, onto my lips. And that's how I take it off. And it's a little stickier in the morning. And again, you've seen a lot of people tape. Everyone's got a different method. Use the right tape. You can tape vertically. You can use the little um, Charlie Chaplin mustache technique, which you referred to in the book. I mean, all of that works. All we need for proper nose breathing at night is that reminder to, to keep the lips sealed. That's all. And that's all that tape does. Don't use duct tape. Don't be afraid that you'll suffocate in the middle of the night. No one's died from mouth taping. Um, uh, with children, we started around two or three, although in some cases you can tape vertically. But remember this, the, the, the struggle or the, the drive to breathe is so strong. It's, it's one of the strongest instincts in the body uh, because we have so little time to fix it if we're not breathing. This panic is so, I mean, your muscles, your body, the thrashing, the the jaw opening, it, you will undo the tape, even if it was duct tape, probably. So I'm not worried about anything like that. How long does it take usually for someone to get used to this? Because again, the point is just to train your mouth shut. It's not to hermetically seal your mouth. People seem right. to get that wrong a lot. Right. But in your experience, it takes people a week, two weeks, what? It depends on the person. Um, I would say for the person that for some reason, and that's a lot of us, that's probably, as you said in the book, 80% uh, sleep with our mouth open, even though we can breathe through our nose. And we can talk about that more. I have some theories on why we do that. Uh, our ancestors probably just had their mouths closed. They were sleeping on their side. They weren't sleeping on beds. 
But it, I would say for a patent, very healthy, uh, well-developed facial structure with the nasal apertures and the nostrils and the whole, the whole passage from start to beginning, uh, from the very start to the end of that nasal passage, if it's open and very patent, then it should just take a day, a night or two. Uh, but then there are some people that it'll take a month. So they say it takes 30 days to, 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 to uh, you know, have a, create a habit. And uh, Somnifex has done some research on this. That is a tape that's specifically designed for mouth taping. Uh, they say at least 10 days. So I think it varies. Now, if you can't breathe through your nose or if you have some congestion, then it could take much longer. It could be little fits and starts where you can just take for an hour and you wake up in an hour and you have to take it off. And, and then, you know, over time, your nasal passages will improve. Uh, the nasal biome will come back and, and you will start becoming a better nose breather. And then there are some people that cannot mouth tape, obviously, because they cannot breathe through their nose. But that's a great thing about mouth taping. You've just identified a problem, a serious problem that should be dealt with. And that's a referral to a, your nose and throat. So a question I kept getting is, why on earth would anyone need to tape their mouth? What's, what's the benefit of taping your mouth? If we have a mouth, we can breathe through it. Why would right. we want to do this at night? I have my own answers, but you're the yeah. expert, so I want to hear no, from no. you. And, and that's a great question. And I've asked that self, myself that question often because I can breathe through my nose. But when I track my sleep, I see big differences between mouth, my mouth being taped shut and, my, and not being taped, even though I'm able to breathe through my nose. So what's going on? Well, obviously, my mouth is open at night. It falls open. And that could be the position of how we sleep and mattresses and our posture in bed, pillows. I mean, that's the modern way of sleeping. And that's not how our ancestors slept. They probably slept curled up, fetal position on their sides. Maybe they dug a little depression in their, you know, bed of leaves or in the soil for their hip. And, you know, the jaw is in a different position based just on gravity. Uh, also, here's the big thing is that they had different facial structure. They developed with a wider face, which meant a more open airway, not, not just this airway, but the nasal passages. And, and we really, again, I would say 80, maybe 90%, but at least 80% of us are suffering in terms of being able to breathe during the day, at night, when our muscles relax, uh, the, the muscles around the airway relax. We are suffering because our faces haven't developed properly. And that's really the width of the face and because the face doesn't grow in width proper, properly, then as the nose septum develops and drops down, it collides into a V-shaped palate. This collision occurs curling and, and, and deviations and, and all sorts of breathing problems. And it, it's three boxes you have to worry about as you develop. It's the airway box, which is the back of the throat. It's the mouth box and the nose box. And it all starts with the mouth box. And this is why dentistry is poised and in the pole position for treating this, diagnosing it, recognizing it early, um, which is what I do now in my practice. And that is, if this mouth box doesn't develop properly, the other two boxes, the nose box and the, mouth, and the airway box, will be deficient. They will be small, they'll be compromised, and you will slowly go into a life where you lead a life of compromised breathing, uh, interrupted sleep, and obstructive sleep apnea, which leads to a host of systemic comorbidities, heart disease, diabetes, you name it, cancer, brain fog. Can you give me just a few reasons on why nasal breathing is better than mouth breathing? The two main reasons that I always look back to when I am reminding myself, you know, why I should be taping at night, and now it's become a habit, but in the beginning it was like, do I really need to be doing this? And as a clinician, you know, I always fall back on, you know, just do the research. And when you look at the numbers um, and what it does for you, um, then it's easy to, to get motivated to mouth tape. And so for me, it's the nitric oxide production. I'm 61 years old after age 40, 45. The endothelial cells, which is where most of our nitric oxide comes from in the, the cells in the lining of the blood vessels, they do most of the production of nitrous oxide. But after age 40, 45, that decreases and it comes from nose breathing assuming you're breathing through your nose and assuming you have the proper bacteria to convert. For example, if you were to eat uh, arugula, 
uh, the, the, the oral microbiome, the bugs that are in the nasal passages on the mucosa and in the mouth, convert that to nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, many will know, is in Viagra. Uh, I, I say that only because people have heard of it in that sense. It's not for that benefit. It has so many other benefits, uh, uh, especially in the COVID uh, world era. Um, I mean, it's antiviral, it's antibacterial, it helps relax us, it keeps us in that parasympathetic state, it relaxes our blood vessels. I mean, it, it makes us happy, it, it, is, it has so many functions, but it is a very short-lived chemical, about a quarter of a millisecond, and it's, it's hard to make. So if you are mouth breathing and you're my age or over, or over age 40, you're not getting any of this wonderful uh, substance. Um, what else? The other reason for nose breathing. Here's the big one, I think, um, as big as nitrous oxide is, and it's not nitrous oxide, which is what Dennis talked about, it's nitric oxide, not to be confused. Um, we, if we don't breathe through our nose, we overbreathe CO2. A lot of people think CO2 is a toxin, we have to expel it. We need a certain amount of CO2 in our bloodstream uh, because that's what regulates the pH of the blood. And if you have, if you're overbreathing CO2, which is what mouth breathers do, they're expelling too much CO2, then your red blood cells are not releasing that oxygen. You're not oxygenating your whole system well enough. So, but if you breathe your nose, the body automatically regulates the right amount of CO2 coming in and coming out and in your blood. So, I mean, I mean, the brain needs oxygen. If you and, and remember, as we age, I think it's by age 80, we're only getting we're getting 30% less oxygen to our our, our um, you know muscles and brain tissue and the and our capillary beds. And so, between nitric nitric oxide and the CO2 O2 balance in the blood and breathing through your nose, this is key for longevity and happiness and and overall overall health. Great. How could mouth breathing give us cavities? As a dentist, you had mentioned this to me years ago, yeah. something I never thought about. But if you could give a, a quick little answer for that. Yeah, uh, it's the pH of the mouth. And anytime, one of the main reasons a biome system, a microbiome system, like the gut microbiome, for example, would change and become dysbiotic, it would be a pH change. It needs those bacteria to be commensal and working together and, and, and not being too pathogenic in one area or the other, it needs a certain pH. The pH of the mouth changes radically just by mouth breathing for an hour or two because the pH drops. And every time you eat a meal, the pH drops, but the saliva is trying to buffer that and keep that pH at a very neutral pH. So really it's about, for example, if you were to sleep with your mouth open all night long, every night for the rest of your life, your oral microbiome would be trashed. It just wouldn't be able to function properly. And it's the oral microbiome and the bacteria there that help remineralize teeth. And if you can't do that, because teeth are always demineralizing. Every time you have a meal, they are going through a stage of demineralizing. And then it's the saliva and the pH change that, and the oral microbiome that remineralizes teeth. So dry mouth leads to a dysbiosis of the oral microbiome and it can't defend itself anymore. And part of that defense is remineralizing um, teeth. Great. Can you tell me some stories of people who have adopted this sleep taping, um, more or less we should say, who have adopted nasal breathing at night and, and have experienced some benefits from it? Right, well, there, there are thousands of stories. I mean, I would say, first of all, it's a hard sell to some of my patients. Uh, it's easy for me to recognize who needs to have a discussion about mouth taping. It could be face type, uh, shape. Uh, it could be uh, a sign of dry mouth. Uh, there are tons of signs and symptoms of that that a dentist can see at a conversational distance. Um, it could be a high cavity rate. It can be periodontal disease. Anything that looks like a dysbiosis of the oral microbiome. And essentially, it, um, I mean, I had a kid come in once. He was probably five or six, had some sleep issues. And on his own, in other words, his mom was not in the room, he told me that his dreams were less nightmarish because of mouth taping. I've had people have fewer cavities, uh, improvement in gum disease or a complete reversal of gum disease with mouth taping, Happy, happier, uh, lower blood pressure, um, lower cholesterol. Uh, here's something you wouldn't think of, um, better food choices. 
when they start mouth taping. They make better food choices, so they start losing weight. They feel better. Uh, they're able to uh, end an addiction, like with alcohol or 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 you know something else. I mean, it's uh, risky behavior, especially in teenagers. Uh, uh, teenagers who see a lot of improvement. I mean, there are so many stories, James. It's it's amazing, and that's why I get so excited about mouth taping because if you see a problem, that's something you need to consider as a root cause for so many things. ADHD, uh, you name it. Blood pressure. Why, why, why do you think that is? Because there's a disturbance in the oxygen delivery to, to the brain during, during night? I, I know that that's a, a major problem with sleep apnea. Right. Um, it, it is, sleep, is, yeah, it can be sleep related. Um, but there are some other things that we haven't considered. For example, you know, if you look at our ancestors and you look at their skulls, which uh, I enjoyed reading about in your book that in Philadelphia, that museum, which I'm now, as soon as I can, as soon as COVID is over, I'm going to go down there and it's probably online too. But every time I see a skull, I'm looking at it as well. But if you look at the nasal, uh, posterior nasal apertures, that's that little uh, space where once you breathe through the nose, it gets down into and joins the main airway. Uh, most of us have narrowed nasal posterior apertures. And we, that's why we can't breathe enough oxygen to, to make it and not have to open our mouths because these things are constricted, these little apertures. Um, and that's because of our improper, that's because of our disevolution or de-evolution, however you want to call that. Um, evolution is not always an improvement. It's just usually changed due to our environment. But in our environment right now is a big factor. But um, I mean, these um, people, um, they, they, the reason for this is probably sleep related, but there are other things. For example, your circadian rhythm could be influenced by how much light the the pituitary gland can see through the nasal passages. I mean, there's some talk of that. Um, I mean, that's just one example. I mean, it's typically probably sleep related. And as you know, James, personally, as, as well as I do, sleep has a lot to do with a lot of things. So it probably is hypoxia, CO2, O2 balances, which lead to other comorbidities that just make you miserable and, and doesn't allow you to square your life curve. But but there are other examples. I mean, there are probably 25 good examples why and how that patent, very open nasal passage really helps. Um, it could be olfactory, it could be smell, it could be the nitric, the nitric oxide uh, uh, factor uh, equation. And I should mention to anyone watching this, Mark's book is great. It has a bunch of science behind this and so many references, so you can check out the eight hour sleep paradox. Just a couple more questions here. Um, what about um, uh, testing your sleep quality at home? Is there anything that like, it's one thing to say like, oh, I, I felt better after sleep tape. It's another thing to have data. How would you do that? Yeah, you can't self assess your own sleep. That's one of the big points I make in my book, which is five years old now. And back then there was only one device that I liked and that was a recording device on your smartphone that would identify if you were snoring or not. And yeah. snoring is, I mean, I think we have a whole chapter on snoring. Snoring is a big deal. Uh, 40, 30, 40, probably 50% of us, it depends on how you measure it, snore. And snoring is not cute, it's not funny, uh, it's a serious thing. And But a lot of us don't know we snore because you cannot self-assess your sleep. Even if you're not sleeping well, you are in a reduced state of consciousness. You know, your sleep partner can. So that's important. Um, and but go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I was just going to say my own experience that I write about in the book at the Stanford ex, um, experiment that that we had. We spent ten days breathing with our mouths open, and the day I used sleep tape, the, the day my snoring went down from a maximum of four hours a night to about four minutes, and three days later to zero minutes. So yep. anyone that says there is not a connection between mouth breathing and snoring has not looked at the data, has not looked at the science. Right. And, and one thing I would just like second what you were saying is snoring is not a cute and normal thing. It, it can cause serious damage to your body. Uh, Christian Guillemot at, at Stanford studied this for decades and decades and found that even some upper respiratory resistance doesn't mm -hmm. have to be snoring or diagnose sleep apnea 
can cause neurological issues and, yes. and other chronic problems. So I just well, want to hop in and mention it's that. A, it's a wheezing. It doesn't have to be a full-on snore. If you're wheezing, just a narrowing of the airway is enough to wake you up. So, so where was I, James? I forget. What was the question? <laughs> we, we were talking about uh, snoring and, and uh, sleep tape and how it might be affected by sleep tape. Right. So, the, so and, and I, I read the, uh, the references that you made that we talked about in the book, and your last reference in, in context with my name was that, that it doesn't help. You quoted me on saying that it doesn't help with sleep apnea, and, and that's true. Um, but for you, for someone like you that is borderline, it will help. So the question is, is you know, what kind of diagnosis do you have? Do you have full-on sleep apnea? Mouth taping is not going to help. Um, it will help in many ways. It'll be a differential diagnosis, and it'll tell you that the CPAP will not work, the oral appliance will not work if you don't open your nose. That means going to have going to a surgeon and having that physically open so that you can breathe your nose. So taping, though, for many of us who are borderline, will help with snoring. Why is that? Um, many theories on that. Uh, it's the air pressure that comes through. When you breathe through your mouth, you're pulling in a lot of air per breath and expelling a lot of air. And when you throw a lot of air into an airway, the Bernoulli's effect, you're compressing that airway. There's a lot of pressure that will allow it to collapse. It can be a back pressure. Um, um, also, you know, if you breathe through your nose, for example, if you force the air through your nose, there are those turbinates, uh, which I love your term in your book, it creates a scrolling effect of the air. It slows it down, it humidifies it, it warms it. And when it does go through the airway, it's not coming through at that velocity that makes it want to collapse and pull shut. So um, it could also be uh, the nitric oxide factor. You know, you're increasing your nitric oxide, which creates uh, vasodilation. Um, I mean, there, there are many factors, but I, I always, and, and I get a lot of kickback from physicians. You know, they think that I'm telling everyone mouth tape and all your problems will be better. I use mouth tape as a differential diagnosis for borderline patients to help improve the lives of people that don't have sleep apnea. I mean, it, it's, it's more about the nose breathing, mouth breathing equation. So, but if you have sleep apnea and you have been diagnosed with it and you've been told you have to wear a, a CPAP or an oral appliance and you can't breathe through your nose, the compliance of both of those, and I know this for a fact because I've worked with CPAPs. Uh, I, of course, do make oral appliances for patients. I know that the efficacy of my device, for example, will not be there if the patient can't breathe through their nose. So breathing through your nose is important, whether you have sleep apnea or not. It can, it can, it's, it's, it's vital. Fantastic. I think that is it for this episode, this very quick Q&A. Um, if you want to learn more about sleep taping or Mark's work, you can check out the eight hour sleep paradox. You can also go to Ask the Dennis. Dr. Mark Verheni, thank you very much and um, keep taping. Absolutely. Every night, even if you think you don't need to, you do.